This week we will continue with electric circuits and this is a electric circuits second part. In this experiment we will learn the difference between connecting the resistors in series and in parallel in an electrical circuit. Also we will learn why is it that we connect voltmeters and ampere meters in parallel and series respectively. The last but not least, we will talk about common points in electrical circuit. So from the last week, you remember that Ohm's law relates the potential difference between the ends of a conductor to its resistance and the current. And the equation for Ohm's law is V is equal I times R, where the units for potential are volts, units for current are amperes, and units for resistance are ohms. As we already said, this week you will learn to analyze the circuit when you have a two resistors connected in series and two resistors connected in parallel. So let's first talk about two resistors connected in series. Resistors are R1 and R2. The first step in analyzing this circuit is to find the equivalent resistance for this uh, particular circuit. The equivalent resistance for two resistors connected in series is e going to be equal to the sum of their individual resistances. Now the potential difference on the power supply is going to be equal to the sum of potential differences across the resistor 1 plus the potential across the resistor 2. The current going through this circuit is going to be same at any point of this circuit. So current coming out from the power supply is going to be equal to the current coming into resistor 1 and coming out of the resistor 1 as well to, to the current coming into the resistor 2 and coming out of the resistor 2. And then using the Ohm's law, if we know the current and if we know the equivalent resistance, we can calculate the potential difference across the power supply. Now let's talk about two resistors connected in parallel. So we have resistors R1 and R2 connected in parallel and to finish the circuit they are connected to the power supply which has a potential difference delta V. So again the first step is to find the equivalent resistance for this circuit. So equivalent resistance for the resistors connected in parallel is given by this equation. 1 over equivalent resistance for the circuit is going to be equal to the sum of 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and then if you have a multiple resistors connected in parallel you're just going to keep adding. Now the potential across the power supply is given by delta V and then potential across the resistor R1 is V1 and the potential across the resistor R2 is given by V2. These potential differences for the resistor connected in parallel are going to be equal. So now let's talk about current. We have a current I coming from the power supply. At this point A here, this is called a junction, the current will split to I1 and I2 and the current, the total current of the circuit is going to be equal to the sum of these two currents I1 and I2. Now we can write the Ohm's law in this form. Potential across the battery is going to be equal to the total current in the circuit times the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now let's talk about one example when we have two resistors connected in parallel with one resistor in series. This example here is similar to the last part of your experiment. When analyzing this type of the circuit, uh, first we are going to find a equivalent resistance for the resistor R2 and R3 and that's going to be given by this equation here. So 1 over R2 3 is equal 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Then the equivalent resistance for the whole circuit is going to be equal to the sum of the resistances for R1 
and the equivalent resistance for R2, R3. Now we know when we have two resistors connected in parallel, the potential across these two uh, resistors is going to be equal. Now the total potential for the circuit, delta V, which is a potential across the power supply, will be equal to the potential across resistor 1 plus potential across resistor 2 or potential across the resistor 3. It doesn't matter because V2 and V3 are same. So let's now move on to the total current in this circuit. So we have a current coming out of the power supply. And then at this point B here, the current will split to I1 and I2. So the total current is going to be equal to the sum of these two currents. Now applying Ohm's law for this circuit, we get that delta V, which is a potential across power supply, is equal to a total current times equivalent resistance for this circuit. Once you remember these rules for these three examples, you're going to be able to analyze any circuit. Now let's move on and talk about common points. Two points in a circuit are common points if there is a zero potential difference between these two points. Although these two circuit diagrams appear to be different, they represent the same circuits. If the points labeled A, B, C and D are connected by wires of negligible resistance, then there is a negligible potential difference between them. Therefore, the points labeled B, C and D are common and they are labeled as K in this circuit. Similarly, the points labeled F, G and H are common points and they are labeled as L in this circuit. This circuit shows a same circuit as this one in which the common points have been brought together. The identification of common points makes construction and analysis of the circuits considerably easier. Now let's talk about how we are connecting a voltmeter and ampere meter in a circuit. Whenever we want to measure current, we always connect ampere meter in series with the circuit elements and then a voltmeter is connected in parallel, like this. The resistance of voltmeter is large, so that small amount of current is traveling through it. This is the reason voltmeter should be connected parallel in an electrical circuit. This way, the voltmeter doesn't affect the circuit. The larger the resistance of the voltmeter, we will be able to have more precise measurement for the potential. Ampere meter has a small potential drop across it, which means that the resistance of the ampere meter is extremely small, and this implies that ampere meter should be connected in a circuit in a series, and this way it will not affect a electrical circuit. Now we will show you a demo for this week's experiment. Hi, so for this experiment we're going to have four long cables, six short cables, three resistors. These resistors for this ex uh, example are labeled R1, 2 and 3. You're, you're going to use different resistors for your experiment. We have a multimeter and a power supply. So the first part of experiment is you have to go ahead and measure the resistance of each resistor and then you're going to align them from the highest to the to the smallest value and then the one with highest value will give you will be a R1 for your experiment and the one with the smallest value will be R3 and the one with middle will be R2. Connect to a common jack on the multimeter and to the voltage jack. Turn on the multimeter to a uh, resistance reading. Now let's measure the resistance for R1. So 
So for this example, this is a 150.9 ohms. Make sure that if this if the multimeter reads kilo ohms to convert. Resistor number two is 27.6 ohms. And the resistor number three is 81.9 ohms. So in your case, this would be R1, resistor number three would be R2, and then resistor number two would be R3. Please do not label these here, you can label this in your manual. So first we are going to connect two highest resistors, in this case resistor one and resistor three, in series from the power supply, from the positive terminals, connect to resistor one. From the resistor one, connect to a R2, and then from R2, close the circuit back to the power supply. So this is your circuit. Now you're going to measure first a voltage, turn the power supply on, Power supply is set to 4.9 or 5 volts, it is okay. So now take two long cables. First we are going to measure potential across the battery, across R1 and across R2. You know that voltmeter is connected in parallel. Let's now go ahead and check across the battery. It is 4.9837. Now let's connect across R1, this way. So remember, voltmeter is always connected in parallel. This one is giving me a 3.2. And then check here, this one is giving me 1.7. So the potential here was 4.9. Here was 3.2 and here is approximately 1.7. Some of these two potentials should give us a potential here. So now, the next part we are going to measure a current. Turn the multimeter to milliamp reading. Now to measure the current, that comes into resistor one. We're going to break the circuit here, connect it to the milliamp jack, and then from the common of the multimeter, close the circuit at resistor one. So we are measuring 21.35 amps. Record that to your manual. Now go back, close the circuit. And now if you want to measure the circuit, that's Coming in from R1 to R3, break the circuit here, connect to milliamp jack, and then from the common, close it here, 21.3. Return the circuit back to the original setup. We can break the circuit here and see what's the amount of current coming out of the resistor two. So connect this to a, use a short, cable, connect from the milliamp, here, and then we are reading, so from the milliamp to, res to the resistor 2, and then from the common back to the power supply, we are reading 21.3. So this is to prove that the current for the two resistors connected in series is going to be same. So now let's go ahead and connect these two resistors in parallel. So we're gonna keep the power supply connections here. The easiest way to connect two resistors in parallel is to do this. You have one straight line from R1, then you have another straight line from R1, so connect two cables here. Take two short cables, connect them from R2. 
and now by connecting these cables here you can create a junction so now you have a two resistors connected in parallel so this cable is one straight line from R2 another straight line straight line from R1 another straight line this is where these two lines meet and now just close the circuit by connecting one side of the power supply here to one junction another side of the power supply to the second junction now I have the connected circuit so first part you're going to measure a potential turn your multimeter back to the potential measurement connect to a common side and to voltmeter now first across the battery like this so this is going to give you a reading again 4.98 okay so now we have two resistors connected in parallel we know that the potential across the battery and across these two resistors is going to be same let's check we can connect here for the r2 4.95 a little bit more that's fine and then for r1 is going to be same okay so we're done with this part record that to your laboratory manual and proceed with calculations now second part to measure current is a little bit trickier so to measure the current go back to milliamp scale connect black cable to common so to measure the current that is coming out of resistor 1 or coming into resistor 1 you can either break the circuit here or here doesn't matter so let's see amount of current coming out from the resistor 1 break the circuit here connect this to a milliamp and then common side from the multimeter close the circuit here we have 32.68 32.7 milliamps okay return this back to measure amount of current coming out of the resistor R2 you break the circuit here connect it to milliamps and then you close the circuit by connecting the common to where you broke it it is 60.03 milliamps okay now return back and now to measure the current that's coming into a junction you're going to break the circuit here the junction connected here so from the power supply to the multimeter and then from the multimeter back to the junction and we are going to measure 91.69 milliamps so we know that the current coming to a junction should be equal to the currents across the resistor coming out of the resistor R2 and R1 and we measured 60 milliamps and we measured 30 something milliamps so this proves a correctness now let's go back and break this circuit the last part of your experiment would be to connect R1 and R2 in parallel and they are in series with R3 so to connect this circuit, you simply start from the positive side of the terminal to R3. From the R3 to a junction. And then close the circuit from the other side of the junction. You're going back to negative terminus of your of the power supply. So now you have R1 and R2 in parallel and R3 is in series with them. So now you're going to go ahead and measure a potential across battery and across each uh, resistor. So we are going to switch this back to the voltmeter. Again, across the battery. measuring 4.98 which is what my power supply gives me now across resistor R 
3 I'm getting 1.678 and then I should expect a cross resistor R1 and R2 to get the same potential so this is 3.28 and across R2 I'm getting 3.28 so these two potentials across resistor R1 and R2 should be same and then some of the either potential across one and potential across three should be equal to the potential across the battery and then some of the potential across R2 and R1 it's going to be equal to the potential across the battery. So now we are going to go ahead and measure the currents. Again, simply by breaking the circuits. So amount of current coming out from the resistor R1, you're going to break the circuit here. Connect this to milliamp scale, to the milliamp jack. Turn the voltage, uh, Turn the multimeter to milliamps here, measurement, and then close the circuit here from the common. So I'm getting 21.65, 21.68 milliamps, okay? Now return this back, close the circuit. The amount of current coming from the resistor R2, this is going to be your I2, break the circuit here, connect to the milliamp scale, and then from the common, close the circuit and I'm getting 39.8 milliamps. Now return back, close the circuit. And now we're going to measure the amount of current that's coming into resistor R2. Simply break the circuit here, connect this to the milliamps, and then from the common, connect here. And I'm getting 61.26. So again, I3, is going to be equal to the sum of I1 and I2. Record these values to your laboratory manual. Once you're done, turn off the power supply, turn off the multimeter, disconnect all the wires carefully. And leave the station exactly same condition you found it when you walked outside when you walked into the lab so you have four long cables and six short cables okay now you're going to proceed with finishing up your experiment this is all for this week thank you